Hey everyone, thanks for checking another video. So in this video, I want to discuss some of the new features I've added to my desktop environment in the browser. Uh, features like NeoFetch, JPEG XL, Screen Capture, quite a few other ones. Uh, if you're not familiar with my project, I've been working on it for over two years now, trying to make a desktop environment in the browser and just adding lots of features here and there. And yeah, I want to talk about some more, so let's just go check it out. Let's jump right in. Uh, so if you want to check it out yourself, it's just DustinBrett.com. That's my name. And if you want to check out the source code, it's called DataLOS. It's on GitHub. It's got uh, some popularity, and I'm, I've been adding to it for a very long time, so quite proud of it. And yeah, let's just jump right in. So in no particular order, some of the cool ones I want to get into here. Uh, let's just start right off the bat by copying some files. Uh, in the past, you used to be able to do drag and drop, but that wasn't good enough. What I wanted to do was to be able to copy and paste through, like, Control-V, basically. Uh, so now you can do that. So let's say uh, I'm copying right now. I'm doing Control-C on my Windows files on my desktop, and now I'm picking, clicking data list. Now I'm hovered here, and now all I do is do Control-V, and right away it copies the files that I had on my clipboard. It was these four files right here. And uh, the way that I'm doing that, just to kind of get into the details of it, so we'll get into a little bit of the details, is something called the paste event. That's something that's on the the window event, and it can detect any paste uh, occurrences, and I've managed to connect that into the file system and get it working that way. And you can kind of see it here in the code. If if interested, use file keyboard shortcuts. And I just add a little paste listener with, with all the other keyboard shortcuts so that when Control-V is triggered, it kind of connects the dots along with the paste listener, and it, uh, it goes into action, so to speak. Uh, and one thing also, I don't, I'm not sure if, I even, if it even was noticeable there, but there's also a transfer dialog. There was a transfer dialog before for drag operations, but I've actually integrated it with quite a few more operations now, so it's, uh, it gives a bit more information about what's going on. Uh, next up, another cool one, like I was saying about screen capture. So if you just right-click on the desktop here, now you can go capture screen, and you get all these different options as far as ways things you can capture. So let's just capture my tab here, and then you want to demo to something to someone. You say, oh, I did something cool on a site. And then now you can do stop sharing, or you can right-click here and just say stop capture. And right away, it'll appear there, and you can see there, there's the file. And that's it, and it'll just show the capture, and you could uh, right-click it there to download it. And just like a typical screen capture, basically. And the way I was able to do that, that's just another native API. It's the, the screen capture API. So it doesn't work on some browsers that don't support screen capture. But the ones that do, I've got it uh, built in now. And one thing I had to do for Chrome, which is kind of a subtle little weird thing. I don't know if this is everyone's having to do this, but there's this fix WebM duration. And I noticed that the WebM files that Chrome was making had messed up durations. And it seems like a still existing issue. So I've just kind of added that little fix and uh, it works. So that's great. Um, so next up in the list here is if you right click on my PC, I've added this OPFS, map OPFS. So on browsers that support it, this is the origin private file system. And basically with this, you can take files, like let's take these five files here and paste them into the OPFS. And I don't know if that'll work. Oh, it did work. Okay, cool. So I got them in OPFS. So now if I were to clear everything here with my reset, uh, you see everything's gone. But if I were to once again go map OPFS, you'll see those files are still there and it shows up here as a mapping. So the origin private file system is a special new type of file system that kind of can survive this uh, deletion process, which is kind of cool. And then I could probably move them back on there and then it's cleared. And now they're back over here. So that's kind of a, a cool thing I, I can do now that's connected with it. And I think I have some information on that as well. Yeah, that's an, another MDN article here, the origin private file system. Uh, it's a new thing and it's not supported by all the browsers, but it's getting up there. Uh, I've actually disabled it on Firefox right now. It's supposed to be happening on their next release, but it was very wonky, so I've kind of waited on it for now. Uh, another cool one here, if you see one of the files I got here, is called the .jxl file. Uh, and JXL is, is the JPEG XL, like I was saying. It's a format that almost managed to make it, but not quite. If you see here from the can I use, uh, the JPEG XL format, basically no browser supports it, unfortunately. But as you see here, I'm in Chrome right now, and I can open up a JPEG XL file and look at it and zoom in on it, and that's a JPEG XL file. And so I've added support, even though the browser people won't won't do it. Uh, they refuse to do it, but I will. Uh, but that's uh, again by somebody else, you know, standing on shoulders. J JXL.js is the decoder that I'm using, and I've just kind of built that into my picture viewer. So it's a kind of a nice way to do it, I figure. And it just seems very integrated. I've also added so that it has thumbnail support. So if you drag in or add a, a JXL file, it'll show the thumbnail right away. Uh, another cool one that I wanted to add, if you open up the terminal here, you can do Shift F10 to open it, or you can right click here and uh, open another terminal like that. Um, uh, and then that way it opens up in the desktop and you can open that in any folder. So let's say here I could open up a terminal as well. 
And then, so I go into the list here, and I can go into the help commands here, and if you see here, I've got a command called iso git. And basically, iso git has all of these commands now, whereas before it, it had quite a few less. And what I've done is I've linked it into the actual CLI that comes from iso git. So if you look up here, they have a command line interface that they already had, where they have all these commands, and it's essentially connected directly to their API commands. So before I just had a couple commands mapped, whereas now I've mapped quite a few, uh, basically all of them, and I've just mapped it in a very interesting uh, direct way. It was actually kind of cool to see again, like going into source code, if you go to GitHub site, you can see the CLI.js and you can see like how they did it. They did it with a thing here called min, 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 mini misted, mini misted, <laughs> not an easy one to say, but I used the same thing. Uh, as I think I did, yeah, anyways, just a, a way of parsing the flags to, uh, send it as a command this being the magic dust here that they just like pass the command in uh but i've done the same thing so again here we're mapped in the desktop so if i pass paste in the iso git command it's able to pick up clone and then it can pick up all these flags so url depth single branch and then i can just run it there and it'll clone it right there and now it cloned a git repo and there's an actual git repo that just got cloned right on my website via these iso git commands so that's another kind of cool one as well uh and then one i've been promising here this neo fetch i've been waiting a long time for this so if you see now you can type NeoFetch, and you, I have NeoFetch installed, kind of. Uh, basically, the way that I've done this is I essentially rebuilt NeoFetch. Uh, for people not familiar with NeoFetch, it's essentially just a system information tool for Linux, and uh, it looks basically like what I did, I'm, I'm happy to say. I mean, people might want to question it and pick it apart, let's say. Hopefully, if you want to, feel free. Uh, but I've, I use things like this UA parser and a few other techniques to get that information. So if you see here, it's, it's somewhat accurate. Like, it'll say my fake OS. It'll say the host is my machine, which is a Windows 10 machine, talk about Chrome. I already calculate uptime, the packages is legitimate. All this information is real, basically. Uh, that's like the way that I like to do these things. So it's all really connected information. So that's another th thing that was fun. Uh, another one here, I'm gonna clear away some of these windows so we can, actually I can do show desktop here. There we go. Uh, a new wallpaper I added is the, the picture slideshow. And basically the picture slideshow, uh, there's a picture of me and my wife. Um, proud of my wife and, and my picture. I have some pictures on my site from my blog and Flickr account. And basically I turned some of them into a slideshow by creating the slideshow JSON file and then making a wallpaper, uh, a custom wallpaper that essentially will just go through these. So, I, and I can, it switches every minute, but I could jump uh, in between. I go back to waves and then pick another one here and it'll randomly pick one of mine. There's me and uh, Jordan uh, at Petra, I think. Um, and you could customize this to your own if you wanted to do the slideshow. Or if I, do, if I were to delete the slideshow, it takes everything in the picture folder and makes another slideshow. So I thought that was kind of a fun one. Another cool one here. I'm going to switch back to my old wallpaper. Uh, actually, I'll switch to another fun one for the rest of this. Let's switch to... Oh, some of these are really rough on it. Well, let's let's just keep it like this. Waves is fun. You know, I like the Waves one. Uh, so if you see another file here is a TTF file. That's a font file. And I've actually added a full-fledged font viewer and made it output basically like how the font viewer in Windows looks. So this is real font viewer. None of this is fake information. You can drag your own fonts in and they'll load like this and show. And I don't know what you can do with this too much, but I just like the idea that I could add a font viewer. Uh, and then finally, a few other little additions to WebAmp. I'm always happy to add to WebAmp. Uh, with the help of, uh, thank you to the person who made WebAmp. I went on their Discord and talked to them about their WebAmp skin museum that they have, which is a pretty cool little... Uh, museum of all the different Winamp skins that have ever kind of existed. You see, there's quite a few there. And what he's allowed me to do, he's connected, disconnected, to, or he's added me to the cores list so that I, my dustinbrett.com has the ability to get random skins. So now in the skins menu, there's always this random option and you can click it and it'll essentially just load a random skin. Uh, and these persist beyond reload. So if you reload the page and you go back to Winamp, it'll keep that random skin and you can pick another one. And if you run this locally, it works too, because that bypasses cores. But otherwise, you have to kind of uh, ask him or figure out another way. So I've also got a detector for that. So if other people use this, it won't show that. But I thought it was a kind of a cool feature. And let's just try to get to a skin here that's not so insane. That one's not so bad. And, and then for the final feature, what I've done, I already had streaming support and everything in music. I already had Milk Drop here, which is like a power of a butter churn. I already have the ability to pass it to the desktop. But now when you right-click on the wallpaper thing here, it'll show the music visualizer. And if I switch to a different wallpaper, let's say I switch to the APOD, the astronomy photo of the day, it'll actually go back to being this mode of uh, the windowed mode. And you can jump back to it again, and then you can see it here, and you can also uncheck it to go to switch it back. So 
that was just another little feature that I thought was kind of fun to add. And that's all the features that I've added over the last little while, plus a lot of bug fixes and a lot of magic in between that I don't want to it's not worth demoing, but I'm, I'm always working on it, always having fun with it. So thanks for checking it out. If you like this video, please throw me a like. If you want to support me, please subscribe. And yeah, um, until then, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.